Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series where we are talking about Active Directory Federation Service or ADFS. In the last video, we talked about certificates in ADFS and how to renew token signing and token decrypting certificates. In this particular video, I will be discussing how authentication works in ADFS. I will demonstrate you how to analyze Fiddler logs and how to check token and the cookies those are issued during ADFS authentication. And then I will be discussing what is active authentication and passive authentication in ADFS and how do they work. So let's understand how authentication flow works in ADFS. In this example, we have two organizations, ABC organization and XYZ organization. ABC organization has a Federation Trust set up with XYZ organization and application of XYZ organization is added as a relying party trust in ABC organization. So the ADFS server of ABC organization has a relying party trust for this particular application. A user from ABC organization is trying to access an application that is hosted in XYZ organization. When this request will go to the application, application will ask the user to reach the Federation server of XYZ organization because the application can't authenticate the user. In third step, client will go to ADFS server of XYZ organization and will ask for permission to access the application. ADFS server of XYZ organization will identify that this user doesn't belong to XYZ organization. So this server will perform home realm discovery to find out to which organization this user belongs to and it will present the user with a web page to choose his organization name. For example, in this picture, if the user belongs to Contoso organization, user will click his organization name and he will be redirected to his organization's ADFS server. This is called home realm discovery. In the fifth step, user will select his organization from the web page he will enter his credentials and will be redirected to his organization's ADFS server. Then ADFS server will contact domain controller to validate the user. Domain controller will authenticate the user using integrated Windows authentication. And once domain controller will validate the user, ADFS will construct a token it will sign the token using private key of the token signing certificate and will send that token to the client. Then client will post this token to the ADFS server of XYZ organization. Then ADFS server of XYZ organization will use the public key of the token signing certificate to validate the token. If it finds the token is valid, it will create a new token and will share this token to the client. Client will pass this token to the application and web application will grant access to the user. So this is how authentication flow works in ADFS. Now let's understand what is passive authentication in ADFS and how does it work? When a user tries to access a federated web application that is called passive authentication. And this type of request is handled by ADFS slash LS endpoint. In this example, a user is trying to access outlook.office.com or OWA. Evo STS is the STS point or the security token service for Office 365. And IDP is the ADFS server of the organization that this user belongs to. So let's see how this user will be authenticated. User will enter outlook.office.com in browser. Then user will be redirected 
to evo sts that is login.microsoftonline.com then user will connect to evo sts evo sts will present office 365 sign in page to the user and user will enter his user principal name evo sts will check if the domain of the user is federated or not so it will return the sts endpoint to the user that means the user will be redirected to his ADFS server. Then user will contact its STS endpoint, that is the ADFS server of its organization. ADFS server will present forms based authentication prompt to the user. Then user will enter his password. When user is authenticated, ADFS server will issue a token to the client. Client will post that token to Evo STS. Evo STS will issue authentication cookies to the user and user will get access to OWA. So this is how passive authentication works in ADFS. Now let me demonstrate to you practically how this authentication works and how to analyze this authentication flow using Fiddler. So let's log in to Outlook office.com and let's log in with the user whose domain is federated so now this user is redirected to adfs server let's type the password and this user is logged in now let's go to fiddler and let's analyze these logs so here what we can see we typed outlook.office.com that is OWA. We were redirected to the STS page for Office 365 that is login.microsoftonline.com. On STS page, I entered user principal name for the user. Then I was redirected to the ADFS server. This is the user principal name of the user who was trying to log in. After that, here we can see the password of the user as well. And when this user was authenticated, few cookies were issued to the client machine. These four cookies were issued. MSIS auth cookie defines that the user is authenticated. MSIS authenticated cookie tells you the date and time when this user was authenticated. If you want to convert this cookie, right click on this and then go to send to text wizard. Here, remove the unwanted values and let's convert it with from base 64. So here you can see the date and time when this particular user was authenticated. The third cookie is MSIS loop detection cookie. This cookie tells you how many attempts user has made to log in to that particular application. You can convert this cookie as well. Same way, delete unwanted values. And here we can see one attempt. That means user has made only one attempt to log in to portal.office.com or to Office 365 application. And the fourth cookie is MSIS sign out cookie. What this cookie does, when user clicks sign out or if he closes the browser, it simply removes the user information from the browser. This is sign out cleanup cookie. You can convert these three cookies, but we cannot convert MSIS auth cookie. Apart from that, when this user was authenticated, a token was issued. If you want to check this token, you can copy this and go to Notepad and save this as XML file. Let's close this and go to desktop. Let's open this. So this is the security token that was issued by the ADFS server to Office 365. 
So this is the access token. Here you will see the date and time when this token was created, 1st of January 2022 and this time. Date of expiration of this token, which is valid for one hour. Next, you will see the name of the application who is going to consume this token. And then you will see the name of the issuer, the Federation Service Identifier name of your ADFS server who has issued this particular security token. Next, you will see the user principal name and immutable ID. In case of Office 365, only two claims are issued within the security token, user principal name and immutable ID. This is the user principal name of the user who was trying to access outlook.office.com. And this is the immutable ID of this particular user. Next, you will see the token signing certificate. If you want to check this certificate, you can simply copy this value till here. Go to notepad. Let me remove this and save this value. And save this with .cer extension. Enter. And let's go to certificate. Go to details. The thumbprint of this certificate starts with ED, ends with 97. Now let's go to token signing certificate. And the thumbprint of this certificate starts with ED, ends with 97. So these values are issued within the security token. And this is how you can analyze the entire flow using Fiddler logs. Now let's understand how active authentication works in ADFS. Active authentication is used by Outlook client and ActiveSync clients. Active authentication is processed by trust slash MEX endpoint, which is for metadata exchange. In this example, a user is trying to create a new Outlook profile and his domain is federated. In passive authentication, we had Evo STS, and in active authentication, requests are handled by org ID. And IDP is again the ADFS server of the organization this user belonged to. So let's understand the active authentication flow. This user is trying to create new Outlook profile, or let's say he is trying to open an existing Outlook profile. User will enter his credentials, and his credentials will be passed to Exchange Online. Exchange Online will pass his user principal name to org ID for Realm Discovery. Org ID will check the domain name of the user UPN and will return STS endpoint to Exchange Online. That is ADFS server STS endpoint. On the fifth step, Exchange Online will pass user's credentials to the ADFS server on behalf of the user. Then ADFS server will issue a SAML token to Exchange Online. Then Exchange Online will submit that token to org ID. And in return, org ID will issue an authentication token to Exchange Online. Then Exchange Online will issue access cookies to the client machine. Client machine will request the access token from Exchange Online. Exchange Online will issue the access token to the client and user will be able to configure Outlook profile. So this is how active authentication works in ADFS when your domain is federated. In the next video, we will be talking about ADFS proxy service. We will discuss what is ADFS proxy service and why it is required. And then I will show you practically how to install ADFS proxy server. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.